because of who he is, is the theme of our mission offering this year. And uh, next week when you come, this mark will be moved up toward our goal as, as giving came in today. But I always, I always remember myself personally, when I give gifts at Christmas time, I always put a body right up there mm -hmm. to give to her so that all the world can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, God initiated the giving of Christmas gifts when he gave us his gift, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christmas story is the greatest story that's ever been told about the greatest person who ever lived and certainly the greatest author that has ever been given to mankind. That is the author, author of salvation. Now this gift of salvation is for everyone and every person here this morning should understand the nature of that salvation but because of the fourfold announcement that the angel made. And uh, so here's the announcement. It says, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And you see that on the next slide. Because that next slide shows Joseph. Now, you recall that Joseph, when he heard that Mary was expecting, is my mic on? Okay, good. Uh, he was not too certain about it, and he was going to have her put away privately. He didn't want to embarrass her. But an angel came to Joseph at night and told him, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child that she has is of the Holy Spirit. And it says you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So there's four things that I want to talk to you about this morning. First of all, the person of salvation. His name is Jesus. And then we talk about the promise of salvation because he will save. Then the people of the salvation, his people, and the purpose of salvation from their sins. Now, by design, this is an evangelistic message. The purpose of this message is to get, make sure that everyone has received the gift of salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord and Savior. And if you have not done so yet, this morning, at the end of the service, we will give an invitation and we will invite you to come and meet with one of our pastors and we will share with you how to receive this gift of Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So we're going to talk about the person of salvation, Jesus. We're going to talk about the promise of salvation, He will save. We will talk about the people of salvation, His people. And we will talk about the purpose of salvation to save you from your sin. So let's begin, first of all, by talking about the person of salvation. So the person of salvation is Jesus. He is the purpose, the person of salvation. Um, it was a fairly common name in biblical days. Yeshua, Jesus, means deliverer. You remember another deliverer, Yeshua, or Joshua, who delivered people from their wilderness wanderings into the promised land. And Jesus came to deliver people, his people, from their sins. His name is Jesus, deliverer. And he came to save us from our sins. That was his purpose. Now, Jesus is a teacher, and Jesus is a healer, and Jesus is king, and Jesus is friend, but primarily, Jesus is savior. Notice it says, today, an angel says, in the town of David, a savior has been born unto you. So Jesus came to be our savior to save us from our sins, to deliver us from our sins. He is the person of salvation. He was born in an obscure village, a peasant woman. He was raised in another obscure village. 
He, he served for 30 years as a carpenter and three years as an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book, never went to college, never owned a home, never had a family. He, he never did any one of the things that we usually say accomplish greatness. And yet, all he had to offer was his life, which was sinless, sinless and powerful. At a very young age, the, the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends deserted him. One denied him. Another betrayed him. He was turned over to his enemies. They had a mockery of a trial. He was hung on a cross between two thieves. And his executioners gambled for the only thing that he owned, his coat. And he hung on the cross and he died. But his executioners did not take his life. He gave his life for us, for our salvation. He gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins. He was placed in a borrowed grave through the, the pity of a friend, but he didn't stay in that grave. On the third day, he rose again in victory over sin and death, and he lives today still to change lives. His name is Jesus, and he's the Savior. He taught as no one ever taught. In fact, one time they sent people to arrest him, and they came back and they said, why didn't you arrest him? And they just said, no one ever spoke like this guy before. <laughs> We've not heard like this before. He taught as no one taught. After the Sermon on the Mount, the people said, he, te he doesn't teach like the scribes and the teachers. He teaches as one who knows what he's talking about. As one who has authority. So he came to teach and he, and he came to heal and he, and he cast out demons and he rose the dead. But primarily he came to be Savior. He is the Savior and his name is Jesus. Do you know him? Have you met him? Has he changed your life? If not, today could be the day. Today he could change your life. He could give you purpose and meaning and fulfillment. And forgive your sins and be bound for heaven. <clears throat> Only two kinds of people in this world. Lost people headed to a Christless eternity, which is a kind way of saying hell. And saved people who are bound for heaven. And you're either in one of those two categories. There is no in-between. And the issue, the only issue is, what have you done with Jesus Christ? Those who receive him have eternal life. Have you met him? Do you know him? We'll give you opportunity at the end of the service to come and meet this Savior that we call Jesus. So the person of salvation is Jesus. The promise of salvation is he will save. That is the promise of salvation. Now notice it says he will save. Not he might save or maybe he saves or if he feels like it he will save. It says he will save. It's a promise. It's kind of like the promise we read in Revelation 3.20 where Jesus says, Here I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will, not I might, not I might, maybe, I will come into him. Now we know that Jesus was knocking on the door of the church in this passage, but we've always applied it personally as Jesus knocks at the door of a person's heart wanting to come in, they, they know that, that their God is dealing with them. If they will open the door, the scripture says, I will come into him. So you can know you're bound for heaven, have eternal life, and have your sins forgiven, not because of what some preacher says, but because Jesus himself has said, I will come in. It's the promise of salvation to all who believe. But not only is this a promise, but notice that the gift of this salvation is free. The gift is free. The Jews did nothing to deserve the coming of the Messiah. In fact, because of their disobedience, they were under Roman rule. 
and uh, they did nothing to deserve coming of Jesus. He came in the fullness of time, not because they are, they, uh, he came in the fullness of time for their sake, for the world's sake. And so, notice that the gift is free. Can I have the next slide, please? We have nothing to do with salvation. The scripture says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works that so no one can boast. In other words, if we can work our way through heaven, through all the good things that we've done, we can get up to heaven and say, well, I'm here because I did this and this. And God says, wait, wait, wait. There's no room for boasting here. You're not here because of anything you did. And it says you're saved through faith. That is faith in what Jesus has done for you. Not what you've done, but what he has done for you. He paid the penalty for sin. And so you put your faith in what Christ has done for you. Now it has to be this way, a gift, because of the nature of man. The scripture says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all of sin. Next verse, please. There we go. All of sin. Now, I've said many times before, all means all. That's all all means. Everybody's in the same category. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark. If you sin three times a day, most of us do that before breakfast. <laughs> that would be, what, 21 sins a week, 1,000 in a year, 50,000 in a lifetime if you've lived a short lifetime. Let's suppose that I were to make you an omelet. You came over, you looked up, hungry. I actually got a picture of an omelet up here. <laughs> Let's suppose that I were to make you an omelet. You come over. And so I get in the kitchen, I start mixing up eggs. I start cracking eggs and stirring them in there. And I look over, and you look pretty hungry. And so I thought, well, we'll give it one more egg in. So I crack that egg, and as it opens up and drops in, I notice this terrible smell. And I look down, and it's green. And I realize it's a rotten egg. And I think, well, I got plenty of good eggs in there. Maybe if I just stir this in there, you know, we'll just mix it all together and we'll just serve it. Did you eat that omelet? That would not be acceptable to you. Well, likewise, we might have a lot of good things we do in our life, but if we stir in some sins, hey, here it is, God. God says, I cannot receive that. You see, there are two ways to get to heaven. One, if you live a perfect life. Oops. The other one is that Jesus Christ died for all that sin to forgive us our sin so that we can have eternal life. And so he is the substitute. He died for our sin because that was our problem. Man is a sinner. Well, not only is this gift free, but in this next slide we see this gift is Forever. It's forever. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, uh, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Eternal, everlasting, forever life. They call it eternal because it's eternal. <laughs> it lasts forever. It's everlasting life. And so it's free and it's forever. What a deal! Amen. You like to get in on that deal? If you Amen. can, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you let Him be your Savior, if you believe that He has forgiven you of your sin through His death on the cross, you can receive Him. And we're going to give you the opportunity to do that in a moment when we close this service. So we've looked at the person of salvation, Jesus. We've looked at the promise of salvation, he will save. Now let's look at the people of salvation. Now we know the scripture says in John 1, 11, that he came to his own. He came to the Jews. But the Jews rejected him. And so the offer became open 
to all the world. We just read John 3.16, for God so loved the world. So you're saying, well, pastor, that means if the Jews had accepted him, then we'd kind of be on the outside looking in. Well, if the Jews had accepted him, they would have been faithful to share him with the rest of the world. Because that's exactly what the rest of the world has done. Now that we have received him as, as Gentiles, we have shared him with the rest of the world. We know that works because there's a church in Wrath from Idaho, which is quite a way from the Holy Land. <laughs> so it does work in sharing the good news. And so... The angel said, I bring you good news of great joy that shall be for all people. All people. Now, here's, here's the statement of Jesus. We'll just show it right up here next. Jesus says in Luke 19.10, The Son of Man came, came to seek and to save what was lost. Now, here's the truth. All are lost. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's why it came for all the world. In fact, let me tell you a fact. The only people Jesus came to save are lost people. And until you realize you're lost, you cannot be saved. So if you think, well, I don't need to be saved, you won't be. You have to realize that you're lost and undone and there's nothing you can do to earn or to get into heaven apart from Jesus. And when you realize there's nothing you can do, then you realize you need a Savior. And there is one. His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And He will save you from all your sin. So that's the promise. We looked at the person and we've looked at the people of salvation. He came to save all who are lost. If you're here this morning and you realize you don't know Jesus, you're in that category of being lost, today you can make the transfer. Today you can receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't let that opportunity pass you by. In a moment we'll give you an opportunity to come and receive Christ. So we've looked at the person of salvation, Jesus. We've looked at the, the promise of salvation. He will save the people of salvation. Anyone who's lost. Now the purpose of salvation. It says he will save us from sin. From their sin. You see man's problem is not his lack of education. Man's problem is not the color of his skin. Or the culture he's raised in. Or his physical health. Or his financial condition. Man's problem is and always has been sin. And there's only one solution to sin, it's Jesus. And this is what's made Christianity different from all other religions. All other religions are, you know, if you do this and you get to this level and you do this, and you might... Christianity is the only one that has a solution for sin. And it's Jesus' death on the cross. And man's problem is his sin. <laughs> and Jesus came to die for our sin. Now, most people want to be saved from the pain and the result of sin, but not from their sinful ways. They say, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to hold on to my sinful habits. It doesn't work that way. The problem is sin. You must repent from your sin. You must turn from your sin. And you must receive Jesus Christ as the payment for your sin. Now, here's the good news. You're not only saved from sin, you're saved to someone, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus comes in, He transforms your life. In fact, this next Amen. verse says, He makes you a new person. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, He is a new creation. The old has gone, mm -hmm. and the new has come. He came to make you a new person. Mm -hmm. He came to give you purpose. Peace, love, mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. security. That's why He came to give you a new life. Not to just cleanse up the old one, not to remake the old one. To give you a new one. That's why He came. Mm -hmm. And that can be yours today. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus 
is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. That's operating in faith. <clears throat> believe that he died for you, rose for you, died for your sin, that you're a sinner. And you can receive him as your Savior. Well, now we've looked at the nature of salvation, the personal salvation of Jesus, the promise of salvation he will save, the people of salvation, all who are lost, and the purpose of salvation to save you from your sin. Do you know that salvation? Or have you just heard of it? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you had a new transformed life of peace and purpose? Do you know Him? Or just about Him? If you do not know Him, we want to give you an opportunity to receive Him today. Here's what you need. First of all, you must admit you're a sinner and lost. Because Jesus only saves lost people. And if you're lost, then you need to save them. So first of all, you must admit that. Second of all, you must believe that Jesus' death on the cross was sufficient payment for your sin and that He rose again in victory over that sin and death. And third of all, you must confess Him to be your Lord and Savior. You must turn from your sin and receive Him as your personal Lord and Savior. That's what needs to happen. Now we have people here that they can help you in that process. Mm -hmm. And for years, that's what we've done. We've helped people come to know Jesus Christ. Somebody helped me years ago come to know Jesus Christ. So in a moment, we are going to stand, have a word of prayer, we're going to sing a song, and that song is our invitation for you to come and take one of our pastor's hands, be four of us up here, and, uh, and, and we will pray with you, we will share with you what you need to do, we will pray with you, help you make that transition to a new life mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Can be yours today. Let's stand together for a word of prayer. We're going to sing a song and we're going to invite you to come and make that commitment and decision. Father, thank you that you sent Jesus and that he came and will save us from our sin. Father, we pray this morning if there is some person here who hears Christ knocking on the door of their heart, who feels now is the time, who feels that the reason they're here to service is to take advantage of this offer of eternal life. We pray that they'll have the courage to slip out beside those they're standing and come down and take a hand and make a public declaration mm -hmm that they want to receive Jesus Christ. That they will leave here today knowing mm -hmm. their sins are forgiven and they have a home in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so we pray for that to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. As the pastors Amen. come and stand here, as we sing, we invite you to come and receive Jesus Christ.
And it could be that every person in this room knows Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior. I will still proclaim the good news from time to time. Amen. It's for all who receive Christ. But if you have another decision you need to make, then we invite you to come at this time and sing another verse, and you're welcome to come. Well, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.